Timeline-based OFX animation brings new power and a smoother flow to animating video effects that you apply on the event and track levels. This feature leverages the strength of animation envelopes in Vegas Pro. It enables you to use the same keyframing techniques that you know from automating track volume and other settings like panning, composite level, and more to change video effect parameters. And you can do all of this work directly in the timeline to keep you focused on your edits so you can work faster. To use these envelopes, choose View Show OFX Effect Envelopes Beta to activate this beta feature. Add two full color clips to the same track in a new project with a bit of space between the timeline clip events. These animation techniques work on both the track and event levels. Click the Video Effects tab to bring the window to the front. Select Black and White from the list of effects and drag the 75% black and white preset onto the first event in your timeline. Place the timeline cursor within the event, and as expected, you see your clip transformed to 75% black and white in the video preview window for a muted color look. We'll animate the effect so that over the course of the event, it transforms from black and white to color. The black and white effect works well for this demonstration because of its simple interface. It has only one parameter, so we can easily animate that to learn how it works. Click the Blend Amount Animate button. Click the Expand Track Keyframes button that now appears in the track header. In the expanded view, you see a list of effects you've chosen to animate. In this case, just the black and white filter. Click the Expand Keyframes button. Now you see the Blend Amount parameter in the list of animated parameters along with a readout of the parameter's current value of 1.0 and two buttons, which we'll talk about later. In the keyframe area to the right, you see an automation envelope whose color matches the diamond icon. The envelope contains one keyframe at the very beginning, and that keyframe has a value of 0.75. That was assigned to it when you chose the 75% preset to add the effect. You can adjust the value of this envelope in several ways. Drag the keyframe up and down to change the blend amount. Drag it all the way up to create a 100% black and white look. Click toward the end of the animation area to place the timeline cursor at that location. Click the Add a Keyframe at the Current Timeline Cursor Position button. Drag the new keyframe down until the value in the track header is at about 0.25. The tooltip will also give the value readout as you change it. This changes the blend amount to 25% of its maximum possible value, and you notice that the video preview window shows more vivid color at that level. Since the two keyframes have different values, you've created an effect animation, as the envelope line indicates. Place your timeline cursor at the beginning of the event and play your project, and you'll see color gradually coming into your clip. You can add as many keyframes to the envelopes as you need to create the animation you want. Back in the Video Effects window, select Brightness and Contrast from the list of effects. Drag the Darker preset onto the same event that you've been working with, to add it to the event's effects chain. Click each of the Brightness, Contrast, and Contrast Center Animate buttons. Notice that Brightness and Contrast is now listed in the still expanded list of plugins. Click the Expand Keyframes button for the Brightness and Contrast list entry. This expands the keyframe area for this plugin while simultaneously collapsing the keyframe area for the black and white filter. This area can be expanded for only one plugin at a time. Notice that although you've animated three parameters and you can see them in the parameters list, you only see two envelopes. Since two of the three envelopes happen to share the same location, you can only see one of them. Match the color of the envelope with the color of the insert keyframe button to identify which envelope you currently see. In this case, the contrast and contrast center envelopes share the same location and you can't see the contrast envelope. To make an adjustment to that envelope, click the Show Hide Envelope button for the Contrast Center parameter. Now you can see the contrast envelope. Drag the envelope up a bit, and click the Show Hide Envelope button for the Contrast Center parameter again, so that you can now see all three envelopes. You can use the same techniques to animate these envelopes as you used earlier with the Blend parameter in the black and white filter. Additionally, three context menus provide more editing options. Position your timeline cursor about halfway through the event. 
Now right-click within the Event Animation field, but not on an envelope, and choose Add Point from the list. This adds a point to each of the envelopes at once, at the location of your mouse at the time of the right-click. Right-click the Event Animation field again and look at the other options. Select a parameter from the list to control its visibility. Don't do this now, but you would choose Reset to remove all the animation you've done and reset all parameters to their defaults. Or, you would select Delete to remove the effect from the effects chain completely, in which case all animation work will be lost. For now, press the Escape key to close the context menu without making a choice. Next, right-click one of the parameter envelopes. This brings up a different context menu with many options. You can add a point to just the envelope you clicked on, reset the envelope to the default settings, change the curve type for the section of the envelope you clicked on, and flip and thin all of the points in the envelope. Experiment with these options. When you're done experimenting with the envelope context menu, right-click a point on any of the envelopes. Here you have options similar to those you've seen already, but also options to set the parameter value of the point to one of the presets or to an exact custom value. Next, notice that while you've been working with the brightness and contrast animations, the black and white animation controls have been collapsed. Again, only one set of controls can be seen at a time, but you can still work with the keyframes in the collapsed area. This makes it possible to easily adjust the timing of your animations without having to expand the controls or worry about accidentally changing a value other than the timing for the parameter. Also note that all of the work that you've done here so far has been on just the one event you applied the plugins to. The other event in your timeline remains unaffected by any of the work you've done so far, but you can also add effects to an entire track, animate those track effects, and work with the same animations right here in the timeline. Click to place the cursor within the other clip on the timeline. It has not been affected by your work so far. Back in the Video Effects window, select Add Noise from the list of plugins. Drag the Extreme preset onto the track header for the track that holds the events you've been working with. Play the project and see that the noise has been added to all the clips on the track. Click the Noise Level Animate button. In the animation area below the track, you now see that Add Noise has been added to the list of effects. In this case, since this is a track effect, notice that the track animation area stretches across the entire track. This way you can easily distinguish between track effects and event effects. Click the Add Noise Expand Track Keyframes button to see the animation controls for the track effect. Now you can use all of the techniques that you learned for the event level effects to animate this track level effect.